What's up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I am bringing you 40 facts on the Warhammer universe. But before we dive into that, I've got a thing that I just noticed. I was going through all our videos, and I noticed we don't have any overview videos. So for somebody starting new, I decided, hmm, where should they start with our videos? And I got an idea. How about an overview on the Space Marine Legions? So that's what we're going to give you guys today. A brief overview on each Legion, their Primarch, and their specialty. So without further ado, I bring you the Space Marine Legions. We begin with the first Legion, the Dark Angels. Their Primarch being Lion L. Johnson. The Dark Angels were the first of the Emperor's Space Marine Legions, and in their earliest incarnation, fought as a personal army of the Master of Humanity. Unyielding, technologically capable, ruthless, the Dark Angels at the time of the Horus Heresy were a powerful and highly independent legion, used to operating on its own conduct during large-scale campaigns and compliance actions. Their Tactics As a first legion, the Dark Angels were originally outfitted with a panoply of arms drawn not from the fruits of the Emperor's Pact with Mars, but instead from the arsenal of the Unification Wars of ancient Terra. Relic weapons and technologies of great potency. Long after the other legions were formed and the Great Crusades standardized much of the Space Marine Legion's war gear, the Dark Angels retained many of these ancient and potent relics, as well as the techno-arcana that resided within them. These they continued to employ, weapons whose secrets were never fully yielded to Mars or their space marine brethren by the Emperor's own command. The Second Legion has been lost and forgotten to the Imperium of Man, but never fear, Gersh One is making his own version of this Legion, so expect that in a video to come. And now on to the traitorous Third Legion the Emperor's Children, their Primarch being Fulgrim. The Emperor's Children have always striven to be exemplars above all other in the arts of war, paragons of martial virtue and excellence, scorning those who do not meet their own, perhaps unattainable, standards. This led them to seek perfection in war as a fluid, lightning-quick force whose battles were preordained victories brought about by a combination of acute strategic planning and flawless execution. Their attitudes and manner led some to name them as the arrogant and vainglorious long before the Horus heresy. But the Legion's warriors were always ready to answer any such slight with blood. The Legion's Tactics To the Emperor's children, before their fall from grace, war was a matter of perfection incarnated in violence, intent, and action. The Legion took great pride both in its excellency on the battlefield and its ability to systematize and replicate any tactic or strategic deployment it needed and execute them flawlessly on command. Of the innumerable such formations and tactics that the Emperor's children operated upon, one that they found favor with was the Legion's Praetors, looking to achieve flawless victory and thereby given glory in the eyes of their peers in Primarch, was the Maru Skara. The traitorous Fourth Legion, the Iron Warriors, were led by their Primarch, Perturabo. The Iron Warriors were the grim, cold-hearted masters of the science of war among the Space Marines. The exemplars of strength and discipline turned exclusively to the systematic destruction of an enemy. The Legion was commanded by its Primarch Perturabo as an extension of his own mind and body, the will of each Legionary utterly sublimated to his conception of victory. More so than in any other Legion, the life of each warrior was secondary to his duty, as much a resource to be expended in the relentless calculus of war as bolt shell or last cannon charge. The Tactics Masters of siege warfare and attrition assault tactics, 
the Iron Warriors favor the use of murderous firepower as their principal agency of war, and they are renowned for their use of heavy armor and fortifications, spurning vainglorious ideals of personal combat and valor for the brutal determination to achieve victory by any means necessary. This culminated in tactical formations such as that which became known as the Hammer of Olympia, designed to carry out an unyielding close-range attack and shatter the strongest enemy defense line under a weight of armored warriors and a hurricane of fire. The Fifth Legion, the Loyalists, led by Jack Ty Khan, were called the White Scars. A bolt of lightning in clear skies, a sudden gale from an unexpected quarter, the White Scars are war's sudden and merciless onslaught. Swift action and a joy for the rush of combat and clash of blades are the hallmarks of their battles. Tempered by a quiet and hidden wisdom that few took the time to uncover, the White Scars thrive in the chaotic heart of battle, anticipating the flow with them, always to be found where the foe is weakest, where they are least expected, and leaving only cold corpses in their wake. The Legion Tactics White Scar Legionaries are often organized into a fighting unit known as the Chagorian Brotherhood, composed of a body of Legionaries mounted entirely on fleet war bikes and Smiter jet pikes, or in other transport vehicles. These formations were ideal for harrying campaigns or lightning strike warfare. When faced with a dug-in foe, some elements of the Brotherhood would dismount to fight on foot, moving to encircle the foe and support their brethren. The Sixth Legion, the Space Wolves, led by their Primarch, Lehman Russ. Since the days of this Legion's inception on Terra, it has remained a Legion apart from its fellows, its origins shrouded as it garnered a fearsome reputation for its warrior's prowess as a shock assault force, as well as tireless pursuers and a peerless hunter-killer force. Unexpected violence was the Legion's calling card, and his campaigns were unsubtle, like brutally swift. Like their later day namesakes, the Wolves of Old Terra, its warriors' assaults are calculated exercises in ferocity, aimed to tear and rend until the foe lies in ruins or is driven to its death. The Tactics of the Space Wolves Conditioned to hold a near suicidal disregard for danger and trained to exploit this, to the fullest on the battlefield. The heavy infantry that form the core of the Legion's battalions are a force that has been honed in battle against the countless enemies of mankind, and, it is whispered, against their own wayward brothers. For unlike their brother legions, the Space Wolves were kept under the tight control of the Imperial Court and unleashed at the Emperor's command, as often to chastise those who would renegade on their oaths of service as to destroy those who resisted the offer of compliance. That may be how they got their nickname, the Emperor's Lapdog. The Imperial Fists, the Seventh Legion, Primarch, Rogodorn. The legionaries of the Imperial Fists, sons of the Primarch Rogodorn, were known as the Stoic Praetorians of Terra, vauntlessly loyal, disciplined, and methodical, they were renowned as masters of assault and defense, fleet warfare, and void combat. As the Imperium expanded ever outwards, so did the Crusaders of the Imperial Fists. The Imperial Fists would construct mighty fortresses that were as much garrisons against rebellion as they were beacons of unification, ensuring that the work of the Great Crusade would stand eternal. The Tactics of the Imperial Fists this legion was a capable legion in any theater of warfare. Their temperament and training meant that they favored a style of warfare that combined the resilient interlocking defense with a calculated burst of relentless aggression. The traitorous 8th Legion, led by Conrad Kurz, is known as the Night Lords. Even before the drop site massacre, the Night Lords Legion was in many eyes already renegade in all but name. Having devoted themselves to the arts of terror and punishment in the service of the Emperor, they became a byword for fear itself during the Great Crusade. 
and the mere rumor of their approach was enough to send entire planets into a panic surrender. The Legion's Primarch, Conrad Kurz, was the master of such terrifying surprise assaults and brutal, punitive campaigns. A dark figure obsessed with death and judgment. The Night Lord's tactics was called the Terror Assault, often conducted under conditions of complete darkness, whether natural or artificially induced. Such attacks were not just designed to overwhelm their foe, but to sow as much gut-wrenching terror in both its victims and any who were left alive to tell the tale. The Ninth Legion is known as the Blood Angels, the Loyalists of the Imperium, led by the Angel Sanguinius. In battle, the Blood Angel Legion was the incarnation of the Emperor's wrath upon those who rejected the gift of unity. Led by their angelic Primarch Sanguinius, their coming was nothing less than apocalyptic judgment delivered upon the guilty from on high. The Legion's tactical doctrines were heavily focused on the use of powerful shock assaults to shatter an enemy's resistance in a single devastating blow. Because of this, Flamer and Melta weaponry was favored at the tactical level, both because of its effectiveness and its ability to provide a fearsome display of action. The 10th Loyalist Legion is led by Ferris Manus, aka the Gorgon, and this legion is known as the Iron Hands. The Iron Hands were among the most technologically adept and remorseless of the Space Marine Legions. Under their Primarch, they were brutal and unstoppable lords of engines of war, wielding weapons and armored tanks with the skill of a master swordsman might wield a blade. Proud and relentless, this legion fought for many years at the forefront of the Great Crusade, and won victories uncounted, though many leveled them as callous and inhuman as the machines they employed with such devastating skill. Their tactics are that they preferred for close-range combat, brutal engagements with their relentless firepower. It was exemplified by a tactic that became known as the Head of the Gorgon. This was where the enemy would be brought to bail head in place and allowed to smash itself to pieces against the body of the Legion's forces, while Resor forces of mechanized armor encircled them before closing in to create a withering crossfire of death. The 11th Legion is also a lost and forgotten Legion, declared so by the Edict of Obliteration by the Emperor himself. The Sound Alchemist will be giving you a very thorough look into his version of the 11th Legion, so stay tuned for that video very soon. But for now, we move on to the 12th Legion, the traitorous World Eaters, led by Angron the Conqueror. Of all the Space Marine Legions in the Emperor's service, the World Eaters were among the most feared, savage conquerors who neither knew nor gave quarter in battle. With their Primarch Angron at the head, they grew ever closer to becoming true monsters, butchers and madmen whose fury was fueled by bloodshed, and was such that no sane warrior would stand willingly against them. Long before the dawning of the Horus Heresy, the World Eaters had stood on the edge of an abyss created by their own unquenchable bloodlust, the bitter rage of their Primarch, and the self-mutilation of their own brains and nervous systems. Baptized in the blood of their fellow legionaries and their own brothers at Isvan III, whether they knew it or not, this legion had toppled headlong into that abyss, and in that darkness the ruinous powers were waiting to claim their souls. Blindly and unknowingly, the World Eaters went to their doom with each sweep of their chain axes and each life torn apart before them. As the blood flowed, the madness within them grew ever worse. And here we have the 13th Legion, the poster boys of Warhammer 40k, the Ultramarines, which are led by Raboot Girlyman. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, I don't like this guy. But anyway, on to the history of this Legion. The Ultramarine Legion persecuted the Emperor's wars with reason, discipline, and resolve. Every warrior striving to match the example of their Primarch, Raboot. 
and the most numerous of the Space Marine Legions at the end of the Great Crusade, the Ultramarines formed a bulwark of the Imperium's domains in the Galactic East, far from Terra, and they served as the Wardens and Protectors of the Imperium. A highly unified fighting force the Ultramarines possessed, an available reputation for strategy and tactical coherence, talents which enabled them to defeat mighty armies with little loss to their own strength. The Ultramarines pride themselves above all things on the unity of purpose and their seamless tactical integration in battle. For many years they have been accorded as being the most numerous of the Space Marine Legions, and under their Primarch they have forged a significant range of tactical doctrines which hone their unity and strength in numbers to lethal advantage. The Death Guard is the 14th Legion, the Traitorous Legion led by Mortarian the Reaper. The Death Guard Legion were stalwart and implacable fighters, warriors who had made a specialty of both endurance under the harshest of circumstances and of overcoming the most nightmarish and inhospitable of war zones. Their name became a byword for unflinching determination and triumph through bloody, grueling attrition when all else failed. As a Legion, they were key to some of the most difficult victories and arduous campaigns of the Great Crusade. Under the guiding hand of their sinister Primarch Mortarian, the Death Guard Legion became famed for their particular expertise in the darker arts of warfare, such as the use of bioalchemy and rad weaponry. Although specializing in entrenched and attritional warfare, this Legion also had a number of formations and tactics that enabled it to operate in concentrated and crushing force. One such was dubbed the Reaping by those who had fought alongside the Death Guard during the Great Crusade. The 15th Legion, the Traitors, led by Magnus the Red, the Thousand Sons. The Thousand Sons were born of capricious fate and had ever walked the precarious path between duty and damnation. This Legion was spared destruction by the discovery of its Primarch the one-eyed giant Magnus the Red. Only by Magnus' devotion to his newly found sons, his vast-like intellect, and his mastery of the arcane was the Legion saved. Of all Space Marine Legions, the Thousand Sons made the greatest use of those possessed of psychic ability, integrating these warrior mystics into a labyrinth command structure so that they, by the application of their powers, could alter the very flow of cause and effect to achieve flawless victories. We have here the 16th Legion, the Sons of Horus, who were also known by the Luna Wolves. In the Sons of Horus was perhaps the most perfect mix of savagery and reason found. In battle, their core combat doctrine was the application of overwhelming force directed to where the foe was weakest, and such was the Legion's mastery of this tactic that they often could turn the tide of an entire conflict with a single, well-placed, brutal attack. Such was the power and vigor of the Legion that it amassed more victories than any other force of the Great Crusade, and such was the talent and reputation of its Primarch, Horus, that it was to him that the mantle of War Master was to fall, with such disastrous consequences for the Imperium. With the treachery of the War Master, their Gene Father, the Sons of Horus Legion grew ever more savage and proud. They fought with callous, calculated fury, born both of the darkness in their hearts and the shadowed powers which Horus had found communion with. Their battle tactics became ever more predatory, a highly coordinated strike force which encircles and tear apart its victims like a pack of nightmarish predators. The 17th Legion, led by Logar Aurelian, to be known as the Word Bearers, was once a legion whose loyalty to the Emperor and fanaticism were absolute. The Word Bearers were the foremost iconoclasts of the Great Crusade, tearing down false idols and scourging worlds of aberrant cults and Zeno's taint. But its master, the Primarch Logar, eventually fell into the error of leading his legion and those they conquered into worshipping the Emperor as a god, requiring their brutal censure. In the aftermath of his punishment, 
Although the Legion appeared to return to the bath set out for them, secretly malice and resentment festered in the word bearers' hearts, and one day they would fall prey to the machinations of the fell powers of the war, becoming a poisonous cancer at the heart of the Imperium. The Space Marine Legion, known as the Salamanders, were led by Volga, and they were the 18th Legion to be founded by the Emperor. The Space Marines of the Salamanders Legion were the Lords of Fire and Forge. They were masters of artifice and possessed a fearsome and impregnable sense of honor and duty, unyielding defenders of humanity on one hand and uncompromising destroyers of all who stood against them on the other. They embodied the ideals of the Great Crusade and its goals, bearing any toil and sacrifice in order to achieve victory. Under the tutelage and spiritual leadership of their Primarch Vulcan, the Salamanders have become a legion of warrior mystics, slow to anger, deliberate in action, and supremely disciplined. But when their fury is unleashed, it is a terrible thing to behold, and carried out with all the arts of warfare and artifice at their disposal. They are an unstoppable tide of fire and destruction, purging all before it. The 19th Loyalist Legion, led by Corvus Corax, is known as the Raven Guard. The Raven Guard Legion were quick to enact justice and retribution upon the tyrants and the oppressors by striking from the shadows with lightning speed and shocking strength. Though able to engage in any sphere of war, the Raven Guard Legion favored the tactics of patience, guile, and subtlety, relying on unmatched skill and reconnaissance and infiltration to identify their foe's weakest point and then rapidly strike at it with precise applied force. The final legion, the 20th legion, is a traitorous legion led by Alpharius and Omegon, and this legion is known as the Alpha Legion. That's a lot of legions. <laughs> History of this legion. Of all the Legion of Astartes, the least is known for certain of the Alpha Legion, a force shrouded in mystery, deceit, and myth. What was known was that the warriors of the Alpha Legion were unsurpassed masters of misdirection and guile in warfare. They would oftentimes leave their enemies vulnerable to sudden surprise attacks by rapidly moving strike forces whose goal was nothing short of wholesale slaughter. And that concludes our overview of the Space Marine Legions. Let me know in the comments down below how many times I said Legion during the Alpha Legion lore. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys for being so awesome. Thank you guys for being great subscribers. Um, you already know the Patreon thing, so I won't even bother with you guys. <laughs> but anyway, keep on liking, subscribing, and doing what you do. As always, this is the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I am signing out. Oh,